Good evening, welcome. Wow, this is a great group of people here. Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, this is the Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, December 21st, our last meeting of 2023. And please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Mr. Miskman? Here. Mr. Jensen? Here. Mr. Harper? Here. Mayor Abouasli? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Ms. Menser? Here. Mr. Cernan? Here. Thank you. At this time, we have a moment of silence. Thank you. All right. First up this evening, we have one of our favorite things to do is uh, to recognize our team members. So we'll have Chief Fagan come up and get on the light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight we're practicing a great tradition within the fire service and personally one of the best parts about being a fire chief, the badge pinning. At this time, I call Lieutenant Zach Bruce, Lieutenant Jeff Madlin, Division Chief Sean Fluharty, Division Chief Cale McBurney, and Deputy Chief Ryan Stephan to come forward. These five officers are being recognized this evening for their recent promotions or reclassifications over the past couple months and had demonstrated the leadership, knowledge, skills, and attributes to serve our community in a new capacity. We'll begin with the rank of Lieutenant, which are the two individuals in the Navy shirts. The Lieutenant or company officer is one of the most important roles in the fire service. They supervise a crew of firefighters which at times may seem like herding cats given our fantastic personalities and attributes. But most importantly, they lead a team, focus forward on completing challenging tasks in difficult environments, such as providing advanced medical care to an unconscious person, cutting apart an upside down vehicle to rescue a trapped resident, or searching for trapped victims inside a building fire. This role is essential to ensure the alignment of our policies, procedures, and leadership towards our mission and vision. Both Lieutenant Zach Bruce and Jeff Madlin have demonstrated that ability and are being pinned with their Lieutenant badge this evening. Next is the rank of division chief, the white shirts on the edges. These chief officers manage essential functions within the fire department, the training and safety division and prevention division. The division chief of training and safety ensures all our responders are not only trained across the broad spectrum of hazardous events that we respond to, but also to ensure their records comply for certification and quality practices. The Division Chief of Prevention is heavily involved in fire code compliance, guarding the safety of our community and helping ensure our buildings are in alignment with the city's adopted code. The Division Chief of Prevention also serves as the Chief Fire Inspector and Investigator leading both of those programs through the department. Both Chief Sean Fluharty and Cale McBurney have demonstrated that knowledge and ability and are being pinned with their division chief badge this evening. Lastly, but not least, is a reorganized position within the Marion Fire Command structure 
This is Ryan in the center. The deputy chief of operations is a branch manager over all emergency response, including fire suppression, emergency medical services, technical rescue, hazardous materials, and the special response team or SRT. The deputy chief of operations also provides oversight of our three fire facilities, the fire fleet, and the training and safety division. Chief Ryan Steffen has demonstrated the knowledge and ability to lead these programs and is being pinned with his badge this evening. At this time, I ask the chosen individuals who are gonna be pinning the badge to come forward. Why don't you guys spread apart and let them stand in between you there. All right, got everybody. So just briefly, uh, why don't you introduce who's who's pinning your badge? We'll start with you, Kayla. Why don't you introduce your family member? This is my father. Um, he's pinning my badge on. Uh, my mother's pinning my badge on. Was a fire chief in the middle for several years. So. Great. Jeff? Uh, this is my dad, John Madden. Um, retired assistant chief in the area fire department for 21 years. Awesome. Ryan? Uh, my wife, Katie. She does my biggest support. This is my, my dad, Steve Gross. Um, he was the one that kind of got me into the fire service, helped me grow up um, as a young kid, and kind of gave me the drive to get into the fire service. So that's my dad, Steve. Awesome. Sean? Uh, my wife, Stephanie. She's been there for 22 years, so she's supposed to be keeping the side long, so she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to recognize the family members, friends, and peers who support our firefighters and officers as they pursue professional development. This recognition tonight is also a tribute to their influence and impact towards the safety in our community. So let's pin these badges on. No blood, Katie? No blood? Okay. Yeah. All right, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you on your promotions. And thank you for your uh, service and dedication to the residents of Marion and uh, the department. And I'm always so impressed to see the support group that comes out to these uh, presentations. It just says so much about the people in the department and the family of people that make, make, make up the department. So congratulations again. At this time, we have a public forum, which is a time set aside for comments from members of the public on any topic that is on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing. Anyone here to address council, please come forward. Is this the first one or the second one? Sorry, sir. Is this the first public comment? Yes, sir. Is there anyone here to address council? Please come forward. Okay, we'll, I will close this part of the meeting and move on to the next section. Mayor, move to approve uh, resolutions, <coughs> excuse me, 7 1, 
excuse me, 31721 through 31733. This will be items A1 through F1. Second. So moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented, including items A1 through F1 resolutions 31721 through 31733. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. For the next portion, I'll turn over the meeting to Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Your Honor. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abu Asli's abstention as follows. Items A1 through F1, resolutions 31734 through 31740. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with the mayor's abstention as follows. Items A1 through F1, resolutions 31734 through 31740. Any discussion or questions? Very good. All those in favor of the consent agenda with the mayor's abstention as stated, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Back to the mayor. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31741, approving change order number one with WABTEC for the caboose refurbishment and authorizing payment in an amount not to exceed $12,480. Second. So moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31741, approving change order number one with WABTEC for the caboose refurbishment and authorizing payment in an amount not to exceed $12,480. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 31741, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Next item is a public comment period regarding the request for the addition of a four-way stop at the intersection of 29th Avenue and 31st Street. Uh, do we have a presentation on this yes sure um so this is going to go through a few details on the tac agenda but i'll start off very high level so 29th avenue um obviously has a lot more traffic than 31st street as you can see in the, the tac report which we'll go into more detail of uh, right now it is a stop control for north south but not east west traffic if we were to put a four-way stop in regardless of the southern information um, a lot of people that live on 29th Avenue would not be able to use their driveway. So something to keep in mind. So high level, the recommendation from staff is not to make it into four way stop and to turn it into a mini roundabout in the future. So high level, and then we'll kind of dive into some details on how we got there. So that I want to make sure that's level set. And then, cause I don't want to lose you when we start talking about the technical engineering numbers. So <coughs> Our MUTCD, our Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, is our guideline that we follow for this. Um, so it basically has different criteria that if those criteria are met, then even if they're met, there's still other things to look at. But these are kind of the minimum you have to pass this muster in order to do this. So the first item is A, is to control traffic while arrangements are being made for the installation of a signal. So let's say that this intersection actually met warrants for a traffic signal, but it's a six month lead time. There's accidents happening. We just temporarily want to put a four way stop in to alleviate that until the signals get here. In this case, the signal warrants, which is in the TAC report, are net not met. And so item A is a no. So we got an X mark on that. The next one is if you have five or more reported crashes in a 12 month period. So if it's an accident prone um, intersection. Um, in this case, there were eight crashes over five years and no more than two in one year. So again, that warrant is not met. The next one is a little bit complicated where it has to meet C1 and C2. So C1, it has to have 300 vehicles per hour that are going east-west, and it has to have 200 vehicles north-south during the same hour. So it actually does meet C1. It meets it 
15 out of the 24 hours, it only needs to meet it for eight. However, C2 for the north-south traffic has to meet it for that uh, identical eight hours of some sort. So even though the 15, there has to be eight hours that there's 200 vehicles north-south at the same time that there's 300 vehicles east-west. So that doesn't happen. So it's an and, it's not an or. So because C2 is not met, the C is not made. The third criteria is if it's a high speed intersection. So if the 85th percentile is above 40 miles per hour, because you have to take your time reaction of hitting the accelerator and going. So if it's a higher speed intersection, they're saying you can take those and you can actually lower them to a lower threshold because of that gap and not being able to judge it because it's a higher speed. However, the uh, 85th percentile on it is not 40 miles per hour. So again, C3 does not apply and does not change C1 or C2. The last criterion then is basically if nothing was met, meaning none of those criteria, um, you could take it to 80% of the minimum value. So you're reducing the 30 and two, 300 and 200 to 80% um, and look at it. So that would take it to 240 and 160 respectively. Um, so if no warrants were met, you could take it to 80% of the values and see if it, if it meets warrants. Even with taking it to 80%, it only meets warrants six out of eight. So it still does not meet warrants. So another X on there. Um, typically on a multi-stop control, you want to balance that. So you have even traffic in each direction. So north-south traffic is 2,247, whereas on 29th Avenue is 10,087 cars. So only a fifth of the cars are on 31st versus 29th Avenue. So if, again, there'll be a lot of delay if you make it into a four-way stop. So that high level is the TAC report. Um, we did mail it out to the 50 petitioners, and I believe some of them are here to, to speak, but wanted to go high level on the criteria that we use to give our recommendation to city council. Thank you. Is there anyone here to address council on this measure, uh, either in, in favor or in opposition? Please come forward and please state your name and your address. And have you filled out the yellow card for us? I have not. Okay, maybe you can do that after afterwards, but uh, okay. and you should be able to get it down at the end of the table there. But uh, if you can state your name and address and please proceed. Sure, uh, Derek Fashlin Gauss, uh, 3115 31st Street, uh, Marion here. Um, okay. Sorry, it's the first time I've ever been to one of these meetings. So okay. tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Um, I do Fine. appreciate you guys with everything that you have uh, put into this. Um, I do. I do understand the criteria there, um, but we live there, <laughs> you know, and uh, we, we've got to cross that traffic um, from 31st and through, you know, passing the 29th. Um, it's an absolute nightmare. If, you, if you're going, um, so if you're going north, um, so if you're going south towards Marion and you're trying to turn left, going maybe to Walmart or something or Hy-Vee or whatever, you just can't get across. Going right is fine. Crossing that traffic is an absolute nightmare. One of the things that was, uh, we've only lived there about a year and a half. One of the comments that was made to me when we first moved in was, hey, we appreciate you guys being here, but it's a nightmare leaving this community, <laughs> you know, because of the traffic. Um, I mean, I appreciate all of this. And, and I know, you know, there was not one person that I spoke to out of the 50 folks that signed that petition that was, in, was opposing that, um, that, you know, having a four-way stop in, in that area. So I would petition that we do it, <laughs> obviously. Um, and I don't know what the, the right way to do all of this, but you know, representing that English Glen community um, and, and having traveled around and visited with those folks, 
it's it's a, it's difficult to get out of that uh, out of that um, housing section. Um, just watching kids trying to cross that traffic as well is a nightmare. Bicycles, you know, it's 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 hard. The traffic is is hard to get across. Um, one of the things that that we realize from that community is that. 31st Street crossing into 29th or wherever you're going, there are hundreds of houses in that area that use that street. That really, unless they're gonna go, um, you know, there's not a whole bunch of ways that you can get out of that housing division. So, um, you know, I, I, would, I would like to see it happen. Obviously, there's been a lot of work put into it and I appreciate that. And of course, we'll, Go with whatever you guys say. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else to address council? Please come forward. Right, 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 right. Okay, have we received comments outside the meeting? We received two um, emails in advance of the meeting. Um, Jerry and Gordon Rector, 2935 31st Street. They were in favor of four way stop. Um, and then Derek, who just spoke. Um, also emailed in favor of the four-way stop. Okay, anyone else? Mike, did you receive any comments? No, ours are all combined with these. Okay, we'll close the uh, public comment section. Move on to the motion. Yes, Your Honor, I move to receive and file a traffic advisory committee report regarding a request for a four-way stop at the intersection of 29th Avenue and 31st Street. Second. I moved and seconded to receive and file the traffic advisory committee report regarding the request for a four-way stop at the intersection of 29th Avenue and 31st Street. Any discussion on receiving and filing the report? Yes, Your Honor, I have a question. Uh, Mike, in the report, um, sort of the longer range uh, idea is is to put a roundabout there. What sort of time uh, timeline and time horizon are we thinking of for that? I, I remember seeing it in some of our budget documentation. Yeah, so it, it was one of the items that was not funded but recommended maybe to move it from the, the not funded to the funded category. So it would depend on when we got funding. Uh, we could apply for... Uh, TSIP funding, traffic safety improvement program funding. I don't know that it would score that high. Generally, roundabouts do score high, but it's not a high uh, intersection with accidents because they look at the cost benefit ratio. So we could do a TSIP application, but I don't know that it would gain us anything. So I'm going to guess this is more on city funds, but if, if that's something we want to go down the route, we can certainly do the TSIP funding to try and get that. So just just the one other thing I would mention um, is, first off, I appreciate your explanation of the decision criteria, decision gating uh, that the data analysis suggests, um, which is important. Um, and the other thing that you had mentioned is if we went to a four-way stop, um, we would end up having obstruction to some number of the residential driveways. I presume those would be along the south, south aspect of uh, 29th going to the west. So I just uh, am appreciative of those those uh, particular issues. Thanks. Okay. And if anybody has more comments in that order, we can bring them up for on the mo on the next motion. Yeah. But sorry. This is right. the motion to receive and file. I'm sorry. Um, any other discussion on receiving and filing? All those in favor of the mo of the motion to receive and file the report, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion is approved. So Mary, make a motion to concur with the traffic advisory committee recommendations for the intersection of 29th Avenue and 31st Street. Second. It's been moved and seconded to concur with the traffic advisory committee recommendations for the intersection of 29th Avenue and 31st Street. A discussion or questions for Mike? Yes, go ahead, Sarah. Mike, was there also a request earlier um, on a crosswalk or 
on 29th, not at this particular section. I feel like we're, I feel like we're starting to, and you know me, I'm always the one um, on this walkability, bikeability piece, but I feel like we're starting, this is starting to get a lot of attention. We've had attention, but with the changes with some of the school has made, we're just seeing a lot more crossings across 29th. We all know it's a large, it's a wider street. Um, so I didn't know if that crosswalk request had also was part of. Yeah, so that was Winchester and 29th Avenue. So it would be east of the mini roundabout that's there today. Okay. And then another question, did the, the counts that we did, was it during school? So we had to wait, they were on a uh, 10-4. So we didn't do them during the middle of construction season. Cause as you recall, we had 29th Avenue tore up. So we waited till that project was done, let traffic get back to normal. Cause we didn't want to have skewed results. So really our only, because I, I feel the pain of that, that neighborhood, the neighborhood takes a lot of time to sometime out of the neighborhood I'm in. Um, and so I, I understand the frustration and I see that we have more going north. So our, really our options are stoplight, stop sign, roundabout in order to help them with the, the turns for getting out of that neighborhood. Okay, that's all I had. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Yes, I mean, I, I appreciate the challenge that the neighborhood on the north side of this intersection face all the time. I mean, I live in this part of Mary, but I'm on the south side of 29th Avenue. And I, I remember the intersection of 35th Street and 29th Avenue when that was a four-way stop. And then that got changed to the roundabout. Uh, in my opinion, having, again, I drive this area a lot. So to me, when we made that change, that improved the traffic flow tremendously. And if anybody at that intersection wanted to cross, at least everybody is slowing down or stopping and watching everybody else come across. So I understand how challenging it is with the width of 29th Avenue to do some of the things that have been requested. So the one question I have for you, Mike, is if we talk about a roundabout here, uh, how common is that to have roundabouts like that only four blocks apart? Is that fairly, fairly common? Or I know this would be the right place to put it between there and you know, clear down on Indian Creek Road. I don't see another intersection that would require it. 31st is a one of the major, other major north-south roads. So is it pretty common to have those only four blocks apart? It varies. I mean, that would be the closest that we have. But if you think of 6th Avenue, a lot of our major intersections there are full roundabouts. This would only be a, a mini, but it, it all varies. Sometimes if you start mixing, say, a signal and a roundabout, then you have issues with timing right. because that stop sign or that stoplight has a large queue and then it releases them all at the same time and they hit the roundabout at the same time. So then it can, it, it just messes with the timing versus having them periodically. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand I mean, Sarah's comments completely. I mean, the 29th Avenue is going to be an ongoing challenge due to the width of it. And uh, as you get more, I think, more housing built up further east, you know, that may even increase the traffic flow. But to me, at least with the roundabout at 35th, that does manage the traffic flow, flow better. So I understand why you have the recommendation for this one. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just to follow on uh, to my prior <coughs> comments, uh, I live north of this intersection and um, traverse through there uh, frequently throughout the week. And so I have a high sensitivity to the petitioner's concerns regarding um, the intersection. I guess, um, and I am sensitive to the fact that the problems that a four-way stop would would uh, impose on that uh, area in terms of um, just the queuing of vehicles, uh, perhaps east-west on 29th. So um, I, I guess I just want to um, register my endorsement for uh moving forward with a roundabout as soon as is expeditiously responsible relative to our budget budget prioritization and if we can identify funding uh you know that will uh help propel that is like is it um i mean it, i know you said that the prospects of getting the grant funding may be 
less than for the other roundabouts that we put in. But uh, I mean, it, is it still a good idea to apply for the grant? And it never, never hurts. The good thing with TSIP funding is it's state funding. Yep. So it, it's half a million dollars max, which should pay for most of it. Um, and it has very few strings attached to it as opposed to some right. of our federal funding that has a lot of strings attached to it. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't take a long time to put the application in. I just know it won't score that high, but it doesn't hurt so, to yeah, go through the effort. So we can still apply and see, see if we can get it. Matt, that was the funding we received for the 35th Street, same same. Yeah, story. 29th and 35th was yeah. TSIP, yeah. Um, 35th and uh, 7th, that was TSIP. So we we tend to use quite a bit of TSIP, even Albernet and Echo Hill was TSIP. I do know that, I mean, I recall when we installed the 35th uh, Street roundabout, there was a lot of discussion about um, whether a four-way stop would be uh, you know, less expensive and more more uh, expedient to get that done, but the the yeah the, the the manner in which traffic would back up at the that stop sign would make it impossible for people with driveways along 29th Avenue on the south side to to get out of their their driveways. So it's solving an issue by but creating another issue. Um, and after after the 35th Street roundabout was installed um people north of there actually came to our meetings and thanked us and said it you know, it, it made it so much easier to cross uh, as a pedestrian well, or as a driver and it really did help out help out the people living north uh, of 29th avenue so um i'm hoping that it would be the same case here and um that we could try to find the funding somehow to get this done as soon as possible because i, I think that is a legitimate concern. I drive through there a lot. I don't live in the area, but um, it is a high traffic area, and it is. I do see cars trying to cross Thirty First, and, and just it's. I've been I've I've been in that position position too, trying to go left uh, from Thirty First onto Twenty Ninth, and it you know. It's, sometimes also it's a matter of perception. You know what the what's a, a minute or two may seem like it's twenty minutes, <laughs> but uh, but. It, it's it's uh, the point's well taken that there is a lot of traffic on that road and that's one we need to pay attention to. Uh, Will you have something? Yeah, I'm just curious for the mini roundabout there. Has anything been done so far, like engineering of it at all or anything? <laughs> no, high level. We put together a number for the CIP, but that's that's, that's as far as we've done. And then the two houses that were moved at 35th, they were voluntary. Yeah, that had nothing to do with the roundabout. It was that had nothing to do with the roundabout project. Well, the wasn't it because of the driveways and a roundabout? Mm -hmm. But they wanted no, no, had nothing to do with the roundabout. Right. Would this that one driveway there on the east side would that interfere at all? Until we get into those details and start drawing it up, I couldn't tell I couldn't you. Tell you. I mean, we have some driveways pretty close at Tenth and Central. Yeah. So it may become that that driveway is a right in, right out. But again, until we actually dive into details, I don't know. Thanks. My time is up. Sarah, you have something else? No, I just say I support the moving forward at the roundabout as quick as we can. Because I also think the other piece of it is, you know, we've got a park just south on 31st there that we host a number of our community events at, our farmer's market. No, that's, I'm going home, yeah, go north, and then you try to turn so um, toward the school. So. You, whatever we can do to help between the schools, the parks, the connections with the, the trail on the north side of 29th from the south neighborhoods, plus the traffic that we're dealing with. Um, please let us know. We appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay. We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion concurring with the Traffic Advisory Committee report, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Next, we have a public hearing regarding the 2024 sidewalk ramp project. We have a presentation, Mike. Yep. Um, so this is our annual program that we do. This is to comply with our ADA transition plan um, that we recently updated. Um, so this is fixes about 60 ramps within our, our city to bring them up to current PROAG which is proposed right of way uh, standards. Um, we did have six bids for this project. 
the low bid was boomerang. Uh, you should have a detailed uh, bid tab in your council packet. Um, they were received on December 12th. So this has a, a start date between May 24th and July 10th with 55 working days and $300 per day in liquidated damages. Um, it did come in at 91.8% of engineers estimate. So if there's, if we see that there's not overruns on projects, we will likely add some more ramps and come back with a change order to do more with the money available. So we are recommending uh, proceeding with the project. Thank you. At this time, the public hearing is open for comments from uh, members of the public. Anyone here to address council on this measure, please come forward. Okay, seeing that no one is coming forward, uh, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. We'll ask if we've received any comments outside the meeting for the I record. I have not. Okay, please note that in the record. Mike, you haven't received any. Okay. Mayor, I move to approve project calendar regarding the 2021 sidewalk ramp project as follows. Resolutions 31742 to 31743. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the project calendar for the 2024 sidewalk ramp project, including resolutions 31742 through 31743. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 24-01, amending section 263-12 of the Marion Code of Ordinances regarding location restrictions of sexually oriented businesses. This is will be the initial consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 24-01, amending section 263-12 of the Code of Ordinances regarding location restrictions of sexually oriented businesses. Discussion. Yeah, Your Honor. Go ahead. Yeah, it, um, just to confirm, is this to take care of some inconsistencies in our uh, ordinances? That is correct. It's okay. to have match it up to the uh, zoning ordinance. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, all those in favor of approving ordinance number 24-01, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31744, approving Sheets Forest Draper Insurance Central Corridor Review related to exterior alterations for property located at 631 9th Street, Marion, Iowa. And this is Madsen Custom Homes. Second. So moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31744, approving Sheets Forest Draper Insurance Central Corridor Review related to the exterior alterations for 631 9th Street. Discussion? All those in favor of approving resolution number 31744, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 23-29, amending the Marion Code of Ordinances by adding language regarding vacant buildings, and this is the final consideration. Second. I moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 23-29, amending the Mar Marion Code of Ordinances by adding language regarding vacant buildings. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of ordinance number 23-29, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 31745, Approving the vacant building policy. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31745, <laughs> approving the vacant building policy. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 31745, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. 
Next on the agenda is a public forum, which is a time set aside for comments from members of the public on any topic. If anyone's here to address council, please come forward. Uh, please complete the uh, information sheet and uh, please state your name and address. Sure. Um, my name is Dustin Mask. I live in Walford, Iowa. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys um, about a couple lawsuits right now in um, Lane County and some some other legal paperwork regarding the Marion Iowa Police Department. Um, the case number I'm talking about is LACV 103490. Um, in this lawsuit, um, number 20 says that Monica Slaughter of the Lynn County Attorney's Office um, urged Bonnie to get breast reduction surgery. Number 32 says Bonnie protested and insisted that she didn't want anything with it, and then Monica exposed herself. On number 38, I'm not going to say the words, but it's a B and it's a C. And I'll get to why those two words matter. On number 49, uh, Monica Slaughter touched Bonnie. On number 53, uh, Slaughter called Bonnie Tits McGee. I've heard that myself. On number 59, it shows on October 7th how there was a lot of problems inside of the office. Number 65 shows Monica Slaughter using the F word. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why, why am I bringing all this up? The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Casey does use those words but he uses those words because the government officials use those words to him first. And he did 30 days in jail, guys, over lies and deception from the Marion Isle Police Department. The picture that I have of you guys, it shows that the records department on the day in question is in the office and they are supposed to be servicing the public. They stole $200 of my money. They have caused countless problems for a lot of people. And it's just a public disservice to be treating people like that and the next thing I have, it is the Sarah Hyatt unemployment appeal. In this appeal, it talks about Sarah Hyatt is not just smoking a joint on her break. She is using marijuana dispensers to the point of sleeping in her boss's office. So the taxpayers were paying her to not just get a little baked, but to just get so incapacitated that you're sleeping on a taxpayer's dollar. And when you have this tinted glass and you have these public servants that don't identify, it really makes you wonder if that's what they've previously done in that department, what are they trying to hide? And you guys may not believe me. You may not think, you know, what I'm saying is credible, but Channel 9, the Gazette, and a lot of the main news around here is covering Monica Slaughter and Nicholas Maybanks. And pretty soon they're going to be covering Marion Isle. And if you guys choose to keep your head in the sand, all the people that are going to consider reelecting you, they're going to see your heads in the sand. You're, they're going to see that, well, these people really don't care. But eventually, you guys are going to have to deal with these issues. There is serious corruption in the Marin Iowa Police Department. I have videos, pictures, and it's just criminal the way that these cops are treating people. And the, the, the malicious prosecution, the, the lawsuit with Bonnie Waller also talks about how Bonnie Waller is concerned about evidence being planted on her and being charged with falsely planted evidence. That, that's in the lawsuit I handed you guys. And that says a lot about the Lynn County Attorney's Office, that that sort of thing is happening behind closed doors. And that attorney's office is where all the Marion, Iowa cases go. And the lawsuit also talks about how Monica Slaughter coaches Patricia to say things for the investigation. So it talks about planning evidence and coaching and creating false narratives to manipulate the government systems. It's all in that lawsuit I gave you guys. In the Marion Isle Police Department, they're the same thing. They, 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 they maliciously manipulate the evidence. They withhold things. They, they literally take innocent people and put them in jail for crimes they did not commit. And, it's, and they're not being honest. That picture I showed you, it, it, it's been a reoccurring thing at the department. The records is either in the office or it's not. And that picture literally shows that is the body cam of a Marion Iowa police officer. And he knows that they're there. They, they know they're, they're completely aware, guys. I really would like to have a meeting with you guys about the Marion Isle Police Department and the building inspection department here in Marion. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Anyone else to address council?
not, we'll move on to council comments. We'll start with council member Cernet. Um, I have none, thank you. Excuse me, Happy sir. holidays, everyone. I hope everyone has a safe and I can't believe we're at the end of 2023 already, but it's been a great year. I'm looking forward to a great 2024. That's all you do. I call that just happy holidays to everyone. Well, same here. I mean, it's the uh, important message for the season. I do want to thank uh, Ryan, uh, your leadership team, and all of the city staff who have indulged me over this past year for the various questions and issues that uh, um, I, you know I come up with. So, uh, thank you for that. And again, happy holidays. And however you choose to celebrate with your friends and family, please be safe. Yeah, one thing I have enjoyed uh, doing over the last three weeks is sending people to Uptown Marion to see all of our lights up there. I mean, the amount of work that has gone into doing that, I keep telling them where to go to look at the new lights, go to the Art in the Alley. Uh, so I love sending people to Marion and enjoy doing that. I also want to thank Chris Sherman for all of the photos that he has in the, the Marion Sun. I think those are terrific. Uh, high quality, but I think those are another way to really uh, show Marion in a way that uh, the rest of us really don't get to see. So I appreciate that. But again, happy holidays and a uh, joyous new year and hope everybody has a good time with their family and friends. Yeah, I would just say happy holidays as well. But um, last week or the week before, I was able to visit uh, Hazel Point Intermediate um, to talk to like four classes of fifth graders um, about local government and answer all their questions about city council. And they, they had turned in, I got questions sent to me ahead of time. Um, and we were kind of going through and I could feel the room wasn't really feeling those questions anymore. So I asked if we other fifth graders. And so I asked if we could just open up, uh, let's just take some Q and A, whatever's on your mind. And this is relevant in part to tonight's agenda. Um, with, with, the, with the caboose. Um, and as soon as we opened it up for questions, one, one boy's hand just shot up. He was like, boom. And I was like, yes, okay, you. Where's the caboose? Um, so I just thought that was a great moment. I, I got to explain and educate them about the new upcoming pocket park. And they were all super excited about that. And, and from there on, I was getting you know, better questions that they wanted to know about. So I just wanted to point that out and give them a shout out because it was really fun. I appreciate the opportunity to get to be there, so. You survived fifth graders? Yeah, there were literally like a hundred of them. <laughs> Almost their age. Yeah, uh -huh, there you go. There, I was waiting for one of those. That's why we sent you. Yeah. For my part, uh, Chief Fagan earlier this week shared with me some um, good news about the department. I'd like him to share it with everyone. Yes, thank you, Mayor. We received uh, news of a grant award uh, from the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation for Disaster Preparedness of $10,000 uh, for our emergency operations plan and continuity of operations plan. So great news there for the community in support of uh, community preparedness. Thank nice. you. And I appreciate your great. proactiveness um, in, in how you're leading the department. Thank you. Uh, this is our uh, the last meeting uh, for uh, Council Member uh, Harper as Mayor Pro Tem. And so I would... Uh, I'd like to thank him. He's done a phenomenal job this last year. And as I stated on Tuesday, we do rotate that uh, annually to give everyone an opportunity to serve in that capacity. And um, Grant has uh, uh, gone above and beyond and, and being, and, and being uh, ready whenever I've asked him to step in and um, uh, handle matters when I wasn't able to handle them and, uh, and also leading the meetings uh, when I'm, I've been absent and to just appreciate his contributions to the council um, and uh, look forward to working with him just as a regular council member <laughs> over the next few years. So uh, Grant, we have a certificate of appreciation for you um, for your service as mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Passing the baton to Sarah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just to wrap things up here uh, for the year, uh, I'm 
finishing up eight years as uh, as mayor. It's uh, hard to believe that it's gone by so fast, but you think about all that we have accomplished just over the last eight years. Um, it's it's really um, uh, a long list of things, obviously. Um, just if you're thinking of just physical projects and amenities, Prospect Meadows, two new parks, the YMCA, fire station, the public service facility, many new trails, the pedestrian bridge over 7th Avenue, 6th Avenue, uh, lots of streets, of course. Um, the East End roundabout uh, development that's happened out there, that whole industrial area getting redeveloped is in the last eight years. The East Town Crossing development, the Lincoln Square uh, redevelopment, many uh, larger multifamily complexes that we didn't have before uh, serving all socioeconomic levels of people, including the, the senior um, residential facilities that, that we've seen, several of those. Um, we've reinvented our city center to make it a, a living room for the, for the region and a place that's a destination where people want to be and businesses want to be. Uh, we've welcomed many new businesses. Uh, on an organizational level, you think about when we started what, eight years ago, um, you know, the, it, it, it was much different. And I, I just, I really, I'm really appreciative of the level of professionalism that we have achieved together. Uh, we've really raised the bar for ourselves and everyone else in the region in terms of how we handle ourselves as a city, the customer service orientation that we've um, achieved, um, the professional decision-making that's, that's, that's taking place. It's not opinion-based, but fact-based and data-based, uh, well-founded, the level of trust that we've built with each other in collaboration and, and the level of credibility we have established with our community. Um, and I could go on and on and on. The, the customer satisfaction level in the community has really um, improved quite a bit. Um, we've done this you know, with challenges like the pandemic and the derecho. And we've accomplished all this in eight years. So just imagine what we can do in the next eight years. We continue to work together to, as I said in my very first uh, meeting, to give each other the benefit of the doubt, to trust each other, and to um, see the best in each other, and to continue working together uh, for, the, for the greater good of the residents of Marion and, and really uh, giving them the best opportunities to the best quality of life. And as we continue to focus on that, uh, we'll continue to shine and be the standout community in the state that we have become. Marion has become sort of the, the poster child across the state of how to do it right in a community that invests in, it, uh, in its residents' priorities and a community that is really prioritizing quality of life and giving people opportunities. Um, and uh, just really proud of that, proud of how far we've come and just look forward to working with all of you for the next four years to um, do even better and continue to reach higher together. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate another holiday, happy holiday. And um, best wishes to everyone for a prosperous and healthy new year. Thank you. We'll see you all in the new year. Close session. Oh, we do have a closed session. <laughs> Mr. Brandt. Mayor, I move to adjourn to closed session regarding litigation as permitted yeah. under section 21.51C of the Code of Iowa. Second. So moved and seconded to adjourn to closed session regarding litigation as permitted under 20, section 21.51C of the Code of Iowa. May we have the uh, attorney's legal statement, please? Thank you, Your Honor. I've reviewed the proposed subject matter for the closed session and find the same to be appropriate under Iowa Code Section 21.51C. Any discussion before we vote? All right. All those in favor of adjourning the closed session, please say aye. 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 We need oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Roll call. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, Mr. Yeah. Miskin. Yes. Mr. Jensen. Yes. Mr. Harper. Yes. Mayor Abuasi. Yes. Mr. Brandt. Yes. Ms. Menser. Yes. Mr. Sternad. Yes. We're adjourned to closed session. Thank you.